All right, so now we're going to use some of these ideas about pressure and density to look at some devices that are used to measure unknown pressure. Uh, the first of these devices is called a manometer. And a manometer basically just compares one pressure to another known pressure. This is how measuring devices work, right? Like if I have a, a scale and I stand on top of it, I have a certain weight that pushes down. And then inside that, that scale, I have you know a spring or whatever that it compresses. And then you measure the compression of that spring. And then you can convert that back into a weight. So measuring devices work in this way. They compare a, a known quantity to an unknown quantity. Um, now, a manometer is not different. Here, I have a known quantity, which is a pressure here. So this is my known quantity. And then here, I have an unknown quantity, which is the pressure that I want to know. Um, and I can develop an expression because I have this, this column of liquid right here that is H. And if you remember, the pressure of this liquid is equal to rho of the liquid, the density of the liquid, times G times H. Um, and so I can develop this expression for P, my unknown pressure, is going to equal to P naught plus or minus rho times G times H. So when you look at a manometer, you need to ask yourself, what well, is P larger or less than the known pressure? And in this case, P is less than the known pressure. So P naught is bigger, so it's able to push this liquid down further and then push it all the way back up here. It might, might help if you think about it in this way. Like, let's say that I have, this would also be a manometer, and I have liquid levels that are here and here. We'll say that this is P, and this is P naught. Now, in this case, P and P naught are equal. They have equal pressures on equal sides, so the levels are the same. But let's say, for example, I have my pressure over here and up here. In that case, P would be greater than P naught. So over here, you would use the positive sign because P is bigger than P naught, so you'd add that rho GH to P naught. Now, if it was the opposite way, let's say that over here, my water level came here, or whatever the liquid is, and over here, it was there. Now, in this case, P would be less than P naught because um, you can see that this pressure would not be strong enough to push the water liquid up to the same level. So P is less than P naught. In that case, you would use the negative here. So the manometer just compares a known pressure uh, to an unknown pressure. Let's see, we've already talked about this. So we can tell that P is greater or less than P naught just based on the levels of the, uh, of the fluids. And if they were equal, they would have this, if the pressures were equal, then they would have the same level. Let's also look at a barometer, a mercury barometer in particular. It's the same as a manometer, except that the standard pressure is equal to zero. The standard pressure, now that's going to be P naught, and that's going to equal to zero. So you'll have a vacuum here. It'll be completely evacuated of all gases, and so it'll have a zero pressure. And then I have a pressure here that will push down. And from our expression, I have P is equal to P naught plus rho GH, or plus or minus. But really, it's only the plus here. In fact, I don't even need to write that because P naught is equal to zero. So the pressure on a barometer is just equal to rho times G times H. So if I have a pressure pushing down out here, it pushes the mercury up into this column up to a certain height. And then you can measure that height in order to find out what is this pressure that caused it. Now, atmospheric pressure, at one atmosphere, the height of that column is going to be 760 millimeters. That's if you're using mercury, uh, which is the common thing to use in, in barometers. But the question is, you know, why do we use mercury and not some other safer fluid, such as water? And you have a homework question, I believe, that deals with this. Uh, where, what if you had a barometer that instead of having mercury had, had water? Well, the pressure 
is equal to rho times g times h. And the reason that we use mercury instead of water is because of this dependence on density. Let's go back and find our density table. I think this is it. Uh, here's the density of water is a thousand, and the density of mercury is more than ten times that of water. And so at one atmosphere, you have 760 millimeters of mercury. Uh, that's almost a meter of mercury. If you were to have water, you would have 10 times that height because your density is roughly one tenth that height. So at one atmosphere, if you had water inside inside of a barometer instead of mercury, your height of that column would be about 10 meters. Right? You'll see that in a homework problem in just a bit. I think that was all for that topic, but let's see. Okay, yeah, so here is a, uh, a concept test question, or a quick a, uh, uh, online quiz, so you can work through this. Don't forget that you need to figure out, are you going to add or subtract that uh, atmospheric pressure P0 in order to find the, the density, or excuse me, the pressure of your methane gas?